Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. It's uh, Joe Jaguar again. Uh, today let's talk about this guy. If you're thinking of getting an ED mill, a refractor, uh, apochromatic, or UD, this might be the one for you. What this is, is this is a slightly older model. Um, so uh, this is Skywatcher's version. This is the go to. So the latest model right now from Skywatch is called Evo Star. The one before that was called the Black Diamond series. And this one is just the one before that. Now, um, what it is, it's an 80 millimeter uh, F7.5 uh, ED or apochromatic. Uh, it's made with the best glass, which is the 53 glass. And it's a doublet, it's not a triplet. Now, let me swing this forward. So you guys can see the lens. Hopefully you guys can see that. Um, let me go a little closer maybe. Now, maybe I'll just tangle it up. So what Skywatcher, see how big that lens cell is um, compared, or the actual tube compared to the lens cell. Uh, Skywatcher on the 80 mil uses um, the same tube on the 4 inch and this one too. So the, as you saw, the tube is actually a lot bigger than it needs to be. Uh, it's a little bit more uh, bigger, it's a little bit more bulkier. Uh, so it's, just, it's like a 80 mil in a four inch tube. Anyway, uh, this scope has been around for a long time. The Skywatcher line, uh, the double 53. So if, if you're a brand new person to the hobby and you're looking to get great images, crisp images, clear out of the planets or have double stars or anything like that. Uh, this is a great contender. Uh, there's a few different companies that make um, you know 50, you know 53 glass in a doublet type of thing like this, 80 millimeter uh, type of thing. But uh, this is a very good scope. Uh, I was actually quite surprised. I tried it on Saturn a few months back when it was closer to its opposition or its prime time. And I was actually surprised because I kind of forgot too. And you know, you're always viewing with bigger scopes. You actually forget what a little 80 millimeter or a three inch uh, telescope can do if it's made out of you know good quality. Uh, so I was, uh, just forgot how good it was, um, and I, I I kind of enjoyed it too. Now this guy, I'm not sure if I can. Let me just swing it over. I did upgrade the focuser because you can see this is a. Um, coarse focuser here and the black part here is the uh, fine focuser. So I did upgrade the focuser to a dual speed. Now it is a Senta GSO one, so it's not a high quality uh, focuser, but at least it gives me uh, that option of fine tuning the focus if I need to. So normally this one just came with a two inch single speed uh, crate for fo focuser. So I upgraded to the dual speed. And as you can see I also have the two inch a diagonal on it. Um, it um, you can also put the inch and a quarter diagonal if you like, use inch and a quarter right pieces. I just prefer putting the two inch diagonal on all the scopes because then I can use two inch or inch and a quarter. It's easy to swap out. Um, now this scope is also good um, being it's F7.5 for astrophotography. So if you're thinking about an astrophotography telescope uh, this could be a tip. Um, some of the people that are really dedicated in imaging would say you should get a triplet instead of a doublet because the camera is more sensitive than our eyes and it will capture a little bit of false color, not a lot, but a little. So the people dedicated to imaging or astrophotography don't want to see any false color at all. And, uh, but I think for most people, if you're just starting into the astrophotography or imaging, um, or and visual, and, you know that this could be all that you need. Um, you know you don't need a huge uh, scope because remember the camera is actually doing 95% of the work on the image. Uh, so your telescope just gathering it, and so you don't need big, um, you know, a big type of telescope or something like that. This this actually a lot of people did really good photos with this size uh, scope. Um, so if that's what you're looking for, then this could be it too. Uh, all around, nice grab and go. As you can see, I have it on the EQ2. Um, let me point it down a little bit. So I have it on the EQ2. 
Now, uh, EQ3 might be a little bit more rock. Um, this will go up a little bit more. The EQ3 uh, is probably more rock solid. Um, so there's no vibration, shakiness, but you know, if you're like me, you live in a condo and you have to bring it outside, down the elevator, to the park or whatever, if you want to just a lighter setup, uh, it, this can work on it. So it just depends on what you want. Uh, EQ2 does fine on it. Uh, if you want a little bit more rock solid, you probably EQ3. Um, if you're doing astrophotography, I would say a minimum, you know, AVX, or maybe the LXD85 or something like that. You just need a much bigger uh, mount so it's rock solid. Uh, you could probably get away with the LXD75, that's Mates, or uh, the ASGT, that's the Celestron's version. Something like that can handle an 80 millimeter because uh, it's not that big and heavy type of thing. So anyway, hopefully you guys like that. So that's what this is. This is a Skywatcher. That's uh, probably at least 10 years old, this guy, maybe 12. Uh, but uh, you probably couldn't tell. The quality of it is very good. You can use it for astrophotography, visually, or both. Um, and uh, there you go. Hopefully you enjoyed this video.